In our Legislator Profile series, we talked to Republican State Senator Kyle McCarter of the 54th District about what drove him to run for office, his small business he's run for 15 years, and his work as an international director for a nonprofit in Kenya. This runs about 10 minutes. Senator Kyle McCarter, thank you so much for joining us here on the Illinois Channel for this member profile interview. You've been a member of the General Assembly since 2009. Let's talk a little bit about what drove you to serve in public office. Well, it's, it's quite a story because growing up I never wanted to be in office, never talked about it. Uh, my family wasn't political, but uh, I, I, when I moved uh, to Illinois after college, after, after being uh, in India and Africa for five years as a missionary, I moved back to Illinois, which was my where my wife was born and raised. I saw a lot of injustice in St. Clair County, where I lived, and so I stepped up and uh, started to serve any way I could. I was a I was a you know a neighborhood watch captain up to uh, ran for election twice and lost, uh, and then I was appointed to the county board, served for eight years, and then when Senator Watson uh, stepped down. I was fortunate to be picked. Everybody said I couldn't, they said I'd never be picked, but, but they picked me instead. And uh, so I've been here six years and it's just a, it's a great opportunity to serve. And um, I, I do this not for the money because I have my own way of making a living. Uh, but uh, I, I'm here for justice and, and, um, and I, I, I love this state and I think we, we, there's hope for this state. And for that reason, I'm here. St. Clair County as part of Southern Illinois. Talk a little bit about Southern Illinois, um, what kind of setting it is, what those people in that area care about. Well, I, you know, what makes my job easy in a way is the people that I represent. Uh, it's a culture mostly rural from the Metro East St. Louis area all the way to Effingham. Uh, largest town is 15,000 people. And uh, these are good people. You know, we, we, we just a couple years ago had a tornado come, came through. Our people were cleaning up before the federal government could get there. And when the federal government got there, half the job was done because these people just pitch in and help one another. So it's a rural community um, and just good, hardworking people. And it's quite a mix, though. We've got, uh, you know, we've got the suburbs of, of, of uh, Metro East St. Louis and then these small towns of anywhere from uh, 500 to uh, 1,500 people. Okay. And I know when people think of Southern Illinois, they think about Southern Illinois University. What are some of the largest employers in your um, district? Well, the, the largest employer in our area is Scott Air Force Base. So a lot of those contractors live in, um, in, in my district and around my district. Uh, it's, the, it's the largest economic driver in the area, uh, billions of dollars every year. And so uh, that would be that. And then, but you know, manufacturing that used to be there, uh, has many, much of it has gone away. And so uh, we're fighting to keep what we have as far as manufacturing. And besides manufacturing, um, what are other issues that your residents in the 54th district? Well, a big, re a big issue in the last in the last year has been Murray Deve Center, uh, the uh, facility for development of disabled folks, and uh, with the election of Bruce Rauner, Bruce, uh, Governor Rauner has come on to say that he's going to keep it. Uh, now, yet he's going to keep it, but we're going to we are together, myself and other leaders, making an effort to bring that to a make it a competitive facility and even bring better care to our residents. And our parents are helping, our, our, our guardians are helping us do that. So that's been a big issue in the last few years. But now we're, we're hopefully turning the corner and going to make that a, a, a place that uh, the state can be proud of. Okay, shifting over from discussing a little bit about the issues, let's speak a little bit about yourself. Um, away from the Capitol, you're also a business owner. Um, speak up, speak on that a little bit. Well, I I've been uh, I've owned my own business for about 15 years now, and uh, I started as a sales rep, and uh, saved a little money and took a took a little commission a commission check I had and moved out on my own and rented a warehouse and my wife taught in East St. Louis, uh, in in in, uh, in in grade school, uh, and so she took care of us while I was getting the business going because we didn't take anything out of it. And we've been very fortunate to be able to get that business going up. It's a manufacturing business. We sell emergency respiratory gear to the uh, Air Force, uh, components to the Air Force. We also uh, have fitness equipment. 
And then we've got another business that sells uh, environmental covers for the power utility industry. Uh, so uh, it's, uh, you know, we've been very, very fortunate to succeed in a tough time in Illinois. But, uh, you know, my, my wife and I, we've worked hard at it, and uh, God's blessed us, and we've got some great people working for us. Wonderful. And aside from that, I think people would find it interesting that you're also an international director of a nonprofit in Africa, specifically the country of Kenya. What prompted you to do this and take on that role? Well, I, I, I'm, I'm fortunate in that I was ra my, my father and mother raised me to, to serve other people because that's all I saw them doing their whole life. They were always bringing people into their house, whether they were families that had a fire, whether they were abandoned kids, uh, abused children. I mean, they were always, there was somebody living in our house the whole time I was, I was being raised. And so, you know, I, I think he, my, my folks gave me that, <laughs> uh, that love for serving other people. And, and they actually started this mission organization many, many years ago, about 30, 30 years ago. And then 25 years ago, I asked my wife and I actually moved to Kenya, built a medical clinic there. Uh, I slept on a table under a tree with a with a mosquito net on until I until I could get the building up. And uh, and then we uh, put staffed it with the physicians and, and and the nurses and and everything. And then we moved back here to to start our own business. But now, my, since my parents um, have retired, my father's uh, not able to travel anymore. My wife and I took that back over about three years ago, and we run that organization. We've got a staff of about 40. Uh, we've got a, a compound of about 20, uh, I'm sorry, 10 acres. And uh, we've got uh, 42 children living at our compound there. We've got 120 that we take care of, orphans, where they're abandoned, abused. Uh, many that are HIV positive. We have a whole program to widows and orphans that are HIV positive. Uh, we have a school with about 175 kids from K through 10, and we've got a medical clinic that serves up to about 15,000 people a year. Uh, we have 3,000 children in that area that we're responsible for their wellness and health care uh, just with, within a, a, about a 10-mile radius. And so it's, uh, it's been a great work. The organization is called Each One Feed One, and uh, eachonefeedone.org shows you can go there and see some of the, the things we're doing. Uh, my wife, my wife will be there uh, here in the next few weeks. Uh, she spends probably three, about three months a year over there. Uh, I spend as much time as I can uh, when they let me go from the Senate. <laughs> no telling when they'll let us go here, but uh, I, uh, we, we love it. Those children have become like our own. Uh, I've got Attention two members of the House of Representatives. So the House will convene in 15 <laughs> minutes. Thank you. Yeah. So uh, no, we you know we've got two two boys. Uh, we've been blessed to have three children. To, you know, two two boys are grown and married, and uh, our daughter would be 30 years old. We lost her a few years, you know, nine years ago, but God's really blessed us. And now we've got all these kids. You know, you you have setbacks in your life, and and you say, well, this is the end of it. Couldn't it's awful. Well, it was awful, and uh, but you can be bitter or you can be better. And we decided to be better, so we have poured ourselves into these kids. And uh, it's been a wonderful thing. Wow, that's an amazing story. So you sound like a really busy man away from lawmaking and being uh, international director um, of the not for profit in Kenya. What do you do in your free time? <laughs> what are your hobbies? Yeah, I, I tell people, you know, we, we uh, I, I don't really don't have any hobbies. This is I, I spend all my free time is spent uh, working for these kids, raising money for them, raising money for the project. We're building a whole new village for them right now because of some of the attacks that have taken place in Kenya on, um, on schools, the, the attack in Garissa, which was just a few months ago. Uh, we're having to move our kids out to a safe area. So we're, we're, we've got a big project. We're raising money for that village. And uh, that's where we spend all our time, but we enjoy it. We, you know, you, you, if, if I love this more than I love playing golf. And if you saw me play golf, you'd probably understand why. But, uh, you know, this is, this is what we do. And I, I think you have to be busy using the gifts that God's given you. And you have to really make the best of that because you, don't, you may not have that much time. And uh, so we, every minute of our day is spent, you know, promoting this work. And uh, I just see it as you have to be a good steward of the gifts that God's given you and the talent. So we're, we're going to do the best we can and spend as much time as we can producing as much good as we can.
That's truly amazing. Kyle McCarter, Senator Kyle McCarter, excuse me. Thank you so much for taking a little bit of time and giving us the opportunity to learn about you.